Motorcyclist killed in Manchester crash. A motorcyclist died as a result of injuries he sustained during a collision with another motorcyclist on the Winston Jones Highway in Manchester on Sunday night. He has so far only been identified as G. Police reports about 11 p.m. a group of bikers were trapped in uphill towards Mandeville from an event in Belfield when two motorcyclists collided. They were taken to hospital where one man was pronounced dead. Bartender killed while eating Sunday dinner. A 54 year old bartender was shot and killed in his yard by a lone gunman while he was having his dinner on Sunday, May 26. Dead is Christopher Brown, a resident of St. Mary. Reports are that around 9 22 p.m., Brown was sitting on his veranda at White River in the vicinity of the farmer's market in St. Mary eating dinner when a car stopped on the roadway and a lone gunman alighted from it. The gunman reported they entered Brown's yard and opened fire, hitting him all over his body. Brown ran into his house where he collapsed. The gunman then escaped. The police were called in and Brown was taken to the Portmore Hospital where he was pronounced dead. No motive has been established for the killing. Investigation continues. Man gone down in Manchester. Police are proving the murder of a man in George's Valley, Manchester on Sunday night. Police named the man as Colton Lewis, 53, a resident of Woodlawn Heights, George's Valley in the parish. A police report said about 8.15 p.m., residents heard loud explosions and subsequently saw Lewis suffering from what appeared to be gunshot wounds on a roadway in the community. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Manchester had recorded 15 murders since the start of the year. Constable allegedly found with contraband in Westmoreland lockup. A police constable attached to the Witton Police Station in Westmoreland has been stopped with possession of charges after he was allegedly found with several contraband items while on cell duty over the weekend. Charge is Constable Jeffy Cantaloupe of Home in the parish. According to reports, the constable, who was on duty along with two other police officers, entered the cell holding Eero along with a black plastic bag in his hand. His supervisor reported a call out to him and the bag was subsequently searched. During the search, 40 craven A cigarettes, one plastic bottle of water containing a white substance suspected to be rum, one transparent plastic Ziploc bag, two packs of land pride, white whistle, wrapping paper, three king brand lighters, one blue and white flow SIM card, and 10 ounces of green vegetable material resembling ganja were found in his possession. The investigation into the matter continues. Three arrested after firearm found in St. Anne. Three persons are now in police custody after detectives assigned to the St. Anne Police Division found a firearm and several rounds of ammunition in a concrete structure in Tranquility Valley, Brownstone, in the parish on Saturday. Reports from the Brownstone Police are that about 11.30 p.m., lawmen conducted an operation in the area where a building was searched. During the search, a Glock 19 pistol with a magazine containing 19mm rounds of ammunition was found inside a concrete structure. The identities of those arrested are being withheld pending further investigation. 53-year-old man charged after 18 million worth of cocaine seized at the airport. A 53-year-old man has been snapped with several charges including possession of cocaine, as investigators from the Firearms and Narcotics Investigation Division seized 4 kilograms of cocaine valued at over 18 million at the Sansa International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James. Charge is Thomas Edwards of Hotsville, Manchester. Reports indicate that about 5.10 p.m., Edwards was stopped by FNID operatives while attempting to board a flight to England. After a preliminary interview and a search of his luggage, the cocaine was allegedly discovered concealed in false compartments. He was subsequently taken into police custody. In addition to the possession charge, Edwards also faces charges of dealing in cocaine, attempting to export cocaine, and conspiracy to export cocaine. Edwards was interviewed in the presence of his attorney on Friday, May 26, and is scheduled to appear before the St. James Parish Court on Wednesday, May 29. Cabinet appointed committee developing strategies to protect children from artificial intelligence and other related threats online. 
As artificial intelligence, AI, becomes more widely used, strategies are being devised to protect the nation's children in the online space. These strategies are being developed by the National Child Online Protection Committee. Speaking with reporters, Chairman Superintendent Carl Berry said that the 27-member committee is looking at the threats and other aspects of AI, as well as other dangers associated with Internet use. He said given the urgency of the matter, the committee is seeking to have the strategies developed within 9 to 12 months. Superintendent Berry explained that in the meantime, other entities are being engaged to assist in the process where possible. He noted that the recent NCOPC open house activity, which saw participation from various groups. I have given my office, even though we have a two-year scenario where we can use up, I'm tasking myself and the team to try and finish this off within 12 months. So this is a nine to 12 month activity we are thinking about. It's a overly ambitious, but I think because of how urgent the situation is, we can't wait to deliver the product after two years, but instead we want to draw that deadline or timeline closer to now. So there are several activities, but beyond that, we are also targeting the parents because the, um, the kids often say that the parents sometimes are not in tune with what they are doing or even thinking. And that's something we also will be plugging as we fix the strategy out. The open house activity was the first of its kind and within another three months, we'll have another item on that timeline that we need to execute. And once we have encircled Jamaica and spoken to enough people, then we will be in a position to pronounce the strategy and have it deployed. Because a part of my job too is to ensure its implementation. So not only will we develop the strategy, but we'll ensure that it's implemented. And once the, it's implemented, then my committee will end and the implementation committee takes over. Beaches Negril spreads joy at Sheffield Primary Children's Day celebration. The vigilant spirit of National Children's Day at Sheffield Primary School reached new heights recently when members of the Beaches Negril Resort and Spa team brought an abundance of joy and excitement to the students. The day celebration organized in honor of Child Month was observed under the theme Stand Up, Speak Out and Protect the Rights of the Children. The BNG theme, armed with sweet treats and one-of-a-kind entertainment, was met with cheers and white smiles, transforming the classroom into a playground of laughter and excitement. In addition, guests and the Sheffield Primary community were treated with a poem from Jamaica Cultural Development Commission JCDC Festival finalist Coralie Brown and a special dance routine from members of the student cohort. Still, emphasis was placed on the observance of National Child's Day theme as students were encouraged to speak up for themselves and speak out about any unacceptable behavior they have encountered or witnessed. Dr. Vinet Malcolm, the school principal, said it is imperative to speak life into children as they are the next generation of leaders. At Sheffield Primary, we believe our students are very important. That is why we found it imperative to celebrate the children today because they are the future. We want them to know that they are truly special and we want them to enjoy the day Malcolm stated. Alia Cunningham, Regional Public Relations Manager at Beaches Resort and Spa, noted that it is crucial to come together to support the development of youth and foster an environment where they feel valued. We want to encourage our children to raise their voices. The special treat also highlighted the community spirit and BNG's commitment to nurturing local connections and spreading happiness among the nation's youth, Cunningham noted. Child Month, which began on May 1, is a period of raising awareness and advocating for the rights and protection of children in Jamaica. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.